So, um, MLA Mini, this is the continuation of the revolution in PA system design that we started with MLA and then extended into the MLA concept um, <clears throat> with the MLA Compact and now the MLA Mini. And applications for the Mini, concert halls, ballrooms, theatres, houses of worship, call for AB, pretty much the whole gamut of um, what you might use a loudspeaker system for. Um, again, reinforcing the versatility of the product. Um, and it can be deployed from a four box system like you see here up to a 16 box system for uh, a full blown PA. So, a particular um, benefit to challenging acoustic spaces that uh, we come across all the time in, uh, in most of the venues that we encounter is this ability that Sam mentioned earlier to program in hard avoid areas into the coverage of the system. And this could be um, the stage, for example. So if you've got lectern mics, if you've got talkers who are not used to projecting the voice, um, lavalier mics and so on, or an orchestral situation where you've got lots of open mics, say, on the strings on stage, then you can <clears throat> set the, the system up so that this particular region is incredibly quiet compared to the SPLs that are being um, delivered to the audience. You can also take that property and attach it to a different problem surface. You might have something like a glass back wall or a balcony front, which is causing the people on stage an awful lot of problems, and just adding to the, the reverberation, the lack of intelligibility in the room. So you can program in these surfaces into the optimization software that configures the system. We call that Display 2.1. And then that will reduce the sound in those specific areas. Um, as well as uh, in indoor situations, uh, Sam mentioned the outdoor wins that we've had with the MLA concept where we've managed to get much higher SPLs for the, for the audience in the field and lower SPLs for the people outside of that. Um, and as such, we've been able to put on a proper rock and roll show at, at uh, good high levels as opposed to a conventional system which would struggle to achieve such. So... The, the cornerstone of the hardware of the MLA Mini is just like MLA and MLA Compact, where we use this cellular drive technique. So that means that each of the acoustic cells within the system has got its own amplifier and, and DSP channel. And what our optimization software is doing is it's configuring the DSP filters for each of those channels, um, <clears throat> each of those cells in the array. And we use a particular kind of filter called the FIR, Finite Impulse Response Filter. And the reason why we use that is because our optimization technique will give us um, <clears throat> filters that we need to realize which have um, magnitude and phase independent of each other. And no other filter topology allows you to do that other than FIR. So that's, that's what the FIR is all about. But that's perhaps enough about the nuts and bolts of how it's done, but what's it achieving? And <clears throat> that level of, um, <clears throat> of control is allowing us to achieve very consistent sound pressure levels from the front to the back of the audience and frequency response as well. Right from the point when you switch the system on, or the software has done all the heavy lifting for you in terms of calculating how to drive the system. Looking at the hardware, the Mini is a complete solution. We have four MLA Minis that we can be driven by one MSX, which is the companion subwoofer. And all of the amplification and processing for the system sits within the MSX itself. Taking a closer look at the MLA Mini, <clears throat> it's a two by six and a half inch design with three um, one inch compression drivers centrally mounted. So if we remove the grill, you can see that it's very similar to the OmniLine product that we launched back in 2007, if any of you are familiar with that, where we've got the, the cones of the bass drivers are actually the same shape as the, the high frequency horn walls, and so this doesn't interfere with the, the, the constant directivity dispersion from the high frequency horn, um, which is 100 degrees horizontal by 10 degrees vertical. And that pattern control is held down to about 400 hertz. After that, it gradually, gradually feathers out into omnidirectional below 100 hertz. But that kind of um, horizontal pattern control is very, very useful um, for reducing the effects of reverberation and reflections in, um, in a problem venue. The high frequency section, it's three one inch compression drivers and they've been specifically designed for this product to cross over at a very low frequency but without the distortion effects that you typically get when you do that. So the crossover point between the bass drivers and the uh, one inch drivers is um, 1.2 kilohertz. Also, you'll see on the side, there's this little grill, 
And that's actually a port which is covered with a waterproof mesh right, because the product can be used outside. And this extends the frequency response of MLA Mini down to below 85 hertz. So you can actually use it without the subwoofer in some applications. <clears throat> it's pretty much a full range box for, say, speak at speech applications. Looking at the MSX, this looks just like a simple, quite compact 1 by 15 inch direct radiating sub, but its performance belies its size, and you'll get a chance to experience that shortly. And again, this is the place where the amplification and DSP for the, each of the, um, <clears throat> the cabinets in the array are housed. So one MSX will drive four MLA minis. So we've got nine amplifier channels in there, one for the MSX itself, and then eight for the four MLA minis, because remember that each mini has got a high frequency channel and a low frequency channel as well. And the DSP is on board, and we've got a total of nine kilowatts of peak power output as well. The main supply for the system is power factor corrected, so that means you can plug it in over in Japan at 100 volts or over here on 240. And it will also range between those voltages. It also smooths out the current draw over the whole of the AC waveform. So typically you draw less current with a power factor corrected system than with a conventionally aspirated power amplifier. For simplicity of deployment, four box systems can be set up using a preset button which is mounted on the back of the MSX. Or for bigger systems, a laptop can be connected either via USB or the UNET um, proprietary network to control uh, and monitor the system. The message with MLA Mini is how scalable and versatile it is. Here you see quite a number of different configurations. We've got the, the four boxes on a pole on top of the MSX that you see here. Then we've got the ground stack application. You can actually have two MSXs and up to eight MLA Minis ground stacked um, on top of each other, which is quite a powerful system. You can certainly do some quite um, interesting shows with that. You can also fly the MSX <coughs> above the MLA Minis. You can get up to three MSXs um, above 12. MLA minis, and for the large deployments, you can fly up to 16 MLA minis from the one fly bar. So the system is very, very scalable um, from small applications up to really quite ambitious uh, gigs. You can actually even take the power module out of the MSX and you can locate it remotely in a rack in a control room and then feed um, the MSX itself and the MLA minis via conventional speaker cables. So a closer look at network and control. There's three ways that you can configure the system. I mentioned um, presets. With a four box situation, we've got um, a number of presets which cater for standard configurations that you might use the system in, like a seated audience or a standing um, audience um, and various throw distances. And so you don't need to use your computer at all for that. You just select the um, particular application in hand, configure the system um, <clears throat> in terms of splay angles and tilt uh, angle, and then just select the preset, plug in, and away you go. You don't need to do any more than that. And the results, you're listening to them now. This is just a preset. We've not EQ'd this system. We've not optimized it. We've just chosen a preset that suits what we're doing here today. We didn't need to do any more work than that to configure it. If you want to take it up to the next level, then just below that um, seven-segment um, LED display that's showing the number eight, Below that, there's a micro USB port. And you can connect your computer directly to the MSX using this USB port, and you can wire up a number of MSXs using the onboard UNET network. And so in that means you can connect your computer to the whole system, and using our proprietary control and monitoring application called ViewNet, you can <coughs> upload presets into the system that you've calculated with Display 2.1. You can uh, control and monitor it. You can look at input metering, output metering, set time delay, mute the system, add parametric EQ, all these kind of things. But for more ambitious deployments, then you can use the, the Merlin um, network management system. And this is uh, how you get audio onto the UNET network. This is also where you connect um, Ethernet to the system. So this means then that you can um, <clears throat> use Wi-Fi to then connect your tablet PC to the Merlin, which then connects via a hardwired UNET link to the MSXs. So then you've got your tablet PC running the ViewNet application, and you can walk around the, the venue untethered to the system uh, physically, and you can EQ it and, and control and monitor the system <clears throat> without being uh, physically connected to it. So you've got these three different levels of engagement depending on the complexity um, of, the, of the system. So moving on from what the hardware is, this is more about the philosophy of, of what we're doing. 
With traditional line array systems, the array design dictates the coverage. And what I mean by that is that you can choose some splay angles, you can choose a tilt angle and maybe a trim height, and that's it. That's pretty much all you can do in order to affect where the sound's going to go. So it's quite a crude tool. Better than where we came from before, but still it's something that we, need, we think we need to move on from. So with MLA technology, the user's requirements dictate the array design. So you're telling the software, Display 2.1, where the audience is and where it isn't and where you want your hard avoid surfaces to be. And then the software is calculating splay angles and tilt angle for you and calculating all the DSP filters in order to give you those results right from the point when you switch it on. Uh, <clears throat> the software is doing all of the heavy lifting in order to figure out how to, how to actually drive the array. It's doing the hard work for you. So this is a new paradigm because it's giving you this radically different acoustic approach, giving you so much more control over things like sound pressure level. You can actually type into Display 2.1 how much louder you want it to be um, towards the front and how much quieter at the back. There's just two boxes. You type it in, in the figures are calibrated in dB. Uh, and the software goes and figures out how to drive the system in order to achieve that. You can even reverse those figures and have it louder at the back and quieter at the front. We've done that on a number of occasions at some demos, demos of the big MLA system. Somebody takes a mobile phone call and they walk away from the system in order to take the call. And we switch the optimization around so it's louder at the back. And the further away they walk, the louder it gets. Leakage. This is something which, again, is, is under control within the software. You decide how important it is to reduce the leakage of the, of the sound field beyond where the audience is. And the software, again, will go and figure out how to achieve that for you. The coverage um, <clears throat> and, and smoothness, this is relating to actually what the audience is hearing. And it come, brings me back to this point of the software doing the heavy lifting for you to actually EQ the system right from the front to the back of the audience, you get a really excellent result right from the point when you switch the system on. So there's no need to put multiple microphones out around your venue and spend hours with, with Smart or, or something similar in order to get a good result. You get a great result as soon as you switch it on. Now you can spend more time with it to make it even better, but the point is that you don't need to. You can go with it straight from the point when you switch it on. Just do things, you know, simple things like time align the subs and, you, and you're ready to go. The hard avoid region, uh, I've spoken about a little bit. This has been very, very effective when you've got these particular problem surfaces in a venue where you might get a reflection off a balcony front back onto the stage and it's disturbing the singer or the, or, or the, or the speaker during a presentation and you can get rid of um, <clears throat> those, um, those troublesome reflections without affecting the rest of the audience. Um, Sam mentioned the orchestral application where you've got open mics on stage, the, also, the performers don't want to be listening to um, the PA system. They want to be hearing themselves and, and, and the neighbors so that they can play properly. These are the kind of things that you can achieve very well with, with the hard avoid property. And the, the smoothness of the, uh, of the frequency response as well is something which is really quite staggering. As you move around the room within the, um, within the audience uh, coverage area, you'll notice when you get a chance to listen shortly, that the coverage of the system is very, very consistent. And again, this is something the computer's doing for us. It's not things that we spend hours um, tweaking and tweezing with, uh, with microphones. <clears throat> 